What discoveries will we get from the world's largest telescope? The extremely large telescope, ELT, the world's largest telescope, is being erected in Chile's Atacama Desert. It will be outfitted with a 39-meter diameter optical lens that will cover an area larger than a basketball court. It will have sharpness and range that are superior than those currently held by the Hubble Space Telescope and even more astonishing than what the forthcoming James Webb Space Telescope will provide. Stay tuned to discover more. One of the main goals of the ELT telescope is to discover new extrasolar planets and study their atmospheres. It will also be in charge of studying protoplanetary disks and other stars to better understand how solar systems form, as well as dark energy and galaxy formation. The telescope is currently being built. Despite setbacks caused by the epidemic, the European Southern Observatory, ESO, has declared that if work proceeds uninterrupted, the telescope would be completed in 2027 and operational in September of that year. Structure The extremely large telescope is the world's second largest optical telescope. That honor is currently held by the Very Large Telescope, a collection of four movable telescopes placed at the Parinal Observatory in Chile's Atacama Desert. The ELT is being built on the top of Hill Armazones because it is one of the best regions on the planet for astronomical observation because it has clear skies 300 days a year, almost no rainfall, and little humidity, and it is located more than 3,000 meters above sea level, so there are very few air particles that interfere with the observations. Despite being in such a high altitude, the ELT is still in the atmosphere and hence sensitive to atmospheric turbulence. Atmospheric Turbulence In astronomy, atmospheric turbulence refers to the disturbance that occurs in telescope photographs when air particles overlap. Remember that the atmosphere is a medium that contains a wide range of gases. These gases act as a fluid that distorts the images we see in the night sky. It is for this reason that the stars appear to flicker. But the stars do not twinkle, instead, the gases in the atmosphere act as a barrier between our eyes and the light of the stars, resulting in a distorted, hazy, and wavering image of the stars after the light passes through the entire atmosphere. This is also why astronomical observatories are built at high elevations such as mountains or volcanoes, the less atmosphere between the telescope and outer space, the less atmospheric turbulence. Although this optical effect is beautiful and inspiring to poets, it is a major issue for astronomers since it interferes with their observations. The simplest way to avoid atmospheric turbulence is to leave the Earth, because there is no air and thus no atmospheric turbulence in space, which is why telescopes such as Hubble and Kepler were placed in the area so that they could observe the stars without interference caused by Earth's gases. However, this is not the only technique to overcome air turbulence. It is also feasible to prevent it via adaptive optics, which the ELT will adopt. Adaptive Optics Adaptive optics is a technique that uses sophisticated computer-controlled deformable mirrors to rectify air turbulence distortion in real time. However, there is a slight drawback. This technique only works if there is a star with a very intense brightness near the object we want to study, which is not always possible to find anywhere in the night sky. Fortunately, there is a simple way to solve this by creating artificial stars. Astronomers can build artificial stars by beaming a strong laser into the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere. This stimulates sodium atoms in the atmosphere 90 kilometers above sea level, resulting in the formation of an artificial star. They aren't genuine stars, they're just a bright source of light that acts as a reference for measuring the Earth's atmospheric aberration at that precise moment and correcting it with deformable mirrors. The deformable mirrors are made of Zeriter, a one-of-a-kind ceramic glass material manufactured by the German company Schott. The French company Saffron Rios polishes each 35 mm thick sheet of Zeriter, resulting in a flexible section less than 2 mm thick, significantly thinner than human hair. Following that, the piece is placed on the surface of a massive mirror, and over 5,000 magnets are bonded to the mirror's back surface. 
This mechanism is critical to the operation of the flexible segment since it is responsible for making over 1,000 changes per second with an accuracy of 50 nanometers, as small as the smallest viruses. Today, adaptive optics may be used to observe nearly the entire sky, thanks to this system, but ESO scientists were the forerunners in this technology. Adaptive optics are now employed in the VLT and will soon be used in the ELT. The Difficulty of Creating the World's Largest Mirror One of the most difficult tasks facing the ESO team is the construction of a 39-meter diameter mirror. To understand why it is difficult, consider the force of gravity. As you may know, gravity is that invisible force that keeps us all subject to the Earth and causes things to fall down rather than up. This same force also causes weighty objects to deform, so a mountain weighing thousands of tons is distorted by the force of gravity, but this deformation is invisible to the naked eye and is only detected when we measure it with high-precision instruments. That is the issue. Telescopes are high-precision instruments capable of detecting these deformations. We need massive mirrors to construct enormous telescopes. Still, astronomers have known since the 1960s that from 3 meters, telescope lenses become exceedingly heavy, to the point where gravity warped telescope mirrors and lenses. This deformation occurs because, as lenses become larger, they become heavier, weighing several tons, and gravity crushes and deforms them, even if they are solid. To build mirrors larger than 5 meters in diameter, gigantic structures were required to support the mirrors, significantly raising construction costs and resulting in extreme forms with no guarantee of picture improvement. Active Optics To address this, ESO engineer Raymond Wilson developed a technology known as Active Optics, a thin, flexible mirror that takes the role of huge, heavy mirrors. The concept of a flexible mirror dates back to the 19th century. Still, it remained hard to imagine because no technology could repair gravity-induced deformations in real time. Everything had to be done by hand, and a telescope mirror that had to be bent is neither dependable nor likely. However, with the introduction of computer technology in the 21st century, it was able to create an active support system made up of hundreds of pistons operated by a computer that would provide the necessary force on the mirror to rectify gravity-induced deformations. The NTT, New Technology Telescope, was the first telescope to use this technique. Because of active optics, the NTT's 3.58-meter primary mirror is only 24 centimeters thick and weighs 6 tons rather than more than 10 tons like its competitors who do not employ active optics. The actuator corrections are calculated in real time by a computer equipped with an image analyzer that recognizes even slight deviations from the ideal shape of the mirror. We are able to offset gravity's deformations as a result of this. This system was later utilized to correct atmospheric turbulence in the VLT. Furthermore, mirrors 8.2 meters in diameter, weighing more than 11 tons but only 37 centimeters thick, were built, but telescopes that did not use this technology grew to be more than 1 meter broad with less range. The new ELT will likewise utilize active optics technology, but on a much larger scale, with a 39 meter diameter mirror. Although it is practically impossible to build such a large mirror at this scale because the slightest movement can break and break the entire mirror, what is done is to build a mirror divided into segments that, when placed next to each other, generate the image of a single mirror. The ELT will be made up of 798 individual segments that, when combined, will form the image of a single mirror. Each of these 798 individual segments can be moved using a piston mechanism and tilt corrector, allowing this mosaic to function as a single gigantic mirror, compensating for the effects of temperature, gravity, and atmospheric turbulence, and providing images that are even better than those provided by space telescopes. Scope with all of these tools, the ELT is expected to be able to observe in the visible and near-infrared light spectrums, which are the same frequencies that the James Webb Telescope will follow. 
In this way, both telescopes will compete to see who can capture the best images of the universe, but, above all, both telescopes will collaborate and work together to study very distant bodies. If either telescope captures an image of a mystery or important object, such as a distant galaxy or an exoplanet, the other telescope will point its mirror at that object to gather even more information. The ELT will feature six separate mirrors, each of which will have a particular purpose. However, ESO scientists believe that the six mirrors will be able to work together to gather additional information about the object being investigated. This will give it a range unlike any other. It is believed that the ELT would be able to see the early universe as well as the universe's most distant galaxies, stars that are too far away in our galaxy, and, of course, planets orbiting other stars. Expected Results the ELT is expected to make the following discoveries once it is operational, tracking Earth-sized exoplanets and habitable zones where life could live around other stars. Fundamental contributions to cosmology have been made by investigating the nature of dark matter and dark energy. The investigation and discovery of tiny black holes. Investigate the behavior and evolution of distant galaxies. Visualize the first galaxies that appeared in the universe during the so-called Dark Ages, the universe's earliest epoch, only 380.000 years after the Big Bang. Investigate and discover tiny bodies in our solar systems such as asteroids, comets, or cloud objects, and a hypothetical ninth planet. Although it may not appear so, many of these research topics still have a long way to go. Some are quite young, such as the study of exoplanets, which is just over 20 years old. ELT will shed new light on all of the universe's phenomena while also providing technologies that will be of enormous assistance to other telescopes across the world. Remember that the ELT will only be able to probe the southern sky and a portion of the northern sky, so telescopes in the northern hemisphere, such as those found at the Mauna Kea Observatory in Hawaii, USA, will also need to implement these technologies in order to have a complete picture of all the mysteries that exist in every corner of the sky. Finally, it should be noted that the ELT will be a pioneer in the implementation of new technologies and new systems that will aid us in better understanding the universe, so this is only the beginning of a new generation of telescopes that will provide us with the tools we need to better understand how the universe began and how it may end. Alright everyone, here's where the video ends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.